Okay, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, so you'll probably want to pause the video and take some notes here and there. Over here to the right, we have a picture of the function 10 minus 4x squared. And where n is equal to 6, so the interval from 1 to 2, we've divided into 6 equal subintervals. And I'm going to depict uh, using left-hand endpoints to get the height of each rectangle. Then we're going to find the area of each rectangle. And then we're going to add them together. And then we're going to let n approach infinity and see what number we get. So the more rectangles we get, the closer we get to the true area under the curve. Okay, so delta x, the width of each of these little rectangles, if n equals 1, is 2 minus 1 over n. So there's delta x right there, 1 over n. Now, to, this is the hard part, I guess, is to picture a formula for each of the left-hand endpoints that we use to calculate the areas. So if you think of it this way, the left-hand endpoint for the first rectangle, we start at 1 and we add on 0 widths. And to get to the this, this second left-hand endpoint, we start at 1 and add on 1 of these widths and so on. 2 of these widths for x sub 3. So the formula for the ith left-hand endpoint is start at 1 plus i minus 1 over n. In other words, uh, this number right here is 1 less than i. And so there's a formula for the ith left-hand endpoint. And we want to plug that formula into the function in order to get the height of each rectangle. So that's what f of x sub i is the height of each rectangle. So 10 minus 4 times this mess squared. And I did it here for you. Uh, you can try to do that yourself on scrap paper. And then a of x sub i will equal f of x sub i times the width of each of these little rectangles. So that's what we're looking at there. And we want to add those all together from 1 to n i equals 1 to n, and let n approach infinity. Now, on the way to doing that, you have to know these formulas right here. The sum from i equals 1 to n of i can be written this way. The sum from i equals 1 to n of i squared can be written this way. So you'll see that on the next board. Uh, look at this mess. f of x sub i times 1 over n uh, I just distributed this 1 over n times that f of x sub i that we had on board 1. And then if we add those all together, we'll have the sum of n areas, or the sum of the areas of n rectangles. And we can break that apart using summation notation uh, rules or properties. Uh, the sum from i equals 1 to n of this term, for example, there's no i in there. And this, remember, n is a constant. So I can pull the 10 over n out front and say the sum from i equals 1 to n of 1. This is just n. And so it goes. Until we get to terms which actually have the letter i in it, then we have to say, like for minus 8 over n squared times the sum from i equals 1 to n of i. And this term also has an i in it, actually an i squared. So I'll let you look those over, see if you can figure it out. Uh, the key is that the sum from i equals 1 to n of just the constant 1 is n, because you're adding 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times. Uh, and so, for example, 10 over n times n, these n's cancel out. But here's the key right here. For these summations, we have to use those formulas from board two. And that's what I'm showing right here. 
So that is replaced with that and so on. Now, if we let n approach infinity, here I simplified each of those. Let n approach infinity, here's the key for this term right here. As n approaches infinity, we get 1 for the first term, n squared over n squared plus 1 over n. The 1 over n approaches 0, so this term approaches negative 4 times 1, or negative 4. And this term right here, if you do, picture dividing n cubed into each term in the numerator, I get negative 4, 6 times 2. All these other terms approach 0. Uh, 8 over n approaches 0. 4 times 1 over n plus n over, or 1 over n squared is going to be 4 times 0. And this will also approach 0 as n approaches infinity. So there, there is the result of letting n approach infinity. I'll let you figure out what that is. 10 minus 4 minus 4 minus 4 thirds is the actual area. There you go. Hope that helped. You have to do the same thing for right-hand endpoints, which will be a little different for this formula right here. Everything else will follow the same pattern. Thank you.